Welcome to Powered by Magic, where we discuss topics surrounding magic and common or not so common questions. Let's take this journey together. Hi, I'm Tatiana. And I'm Sylvia. And we are coming to you from Eugene, Oregon. We invite you to conjure up a broom and ride with us. All right. How are you today? Oh, pretty good. I don't think I actually thought about it before the beginning of this podcast. I know, recording. catch you off guard. Me too. Right? Right? Um, well, I'm. we're going to celebrate Astara. Right. We put out a nice little extra episode on that. Yep. And then on the end of this week, I'm going to have a girls weekend with some other friends of mine. Right. Yeah. We're going to do a game day, and we're going to do hair dyeing, and it's it's going to be a lot of fun. We're also going to do house cleaning and stuff like that, but hey. Meh. Yeah. I guess you have to have the good with the bad. Yep. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, how about you? Well, I'm getting ready to do a pet sit that has a puppy dog involved, so... And oh, I boy. mean a puppy, as you know, and yep. I am sort of dreading that. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, I will be getting together with my son and his wife, which I'm very much looking forward to. Nice. Get to spend the night over there with them. So that's kind of my reward for the week of hell that's coming up. Yeah, you, you are not taking with you so many things because it is a puppy. Yes, I'm leaving so much behind just to be on the safe side. Mm-hmm. And including my comfy pillow that is like how I sleep best. And I'm afraid he'll chew it up, so I'm not taking it. Yeah. And we are going to celebrate Ostara together, which I'm excited about. So am I. I got the day off. Yes, you got the day off. And I'm free, so it's going to work out nicely. Yeah. Okay. How about we jump right on in? You want to start? Sure. Today's... Which's tool is the pentagram and or pentacle. A pentagram is a five-pointed star with each line connected. A pentacle is a circular disc often made of clay with a pentagram in it. A pentagram is a reminder of the four elements plus spirit that make up the world, one for each point, and used most often as a Wiccan and or pagan symbol of the faith. The pentacle is most often meant or used to represent earth on the altar. It took me far too long to remember the difference, and I still get them confused sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Pentagrams can be found as early as 3500 BCE in Sumeria, and the same goes for the pentacle, apparently. I looked that up both independently in different places, and it said same place, same era, so... Interesting. Yeah. Pentacles can also be found as one of the suits of tarot cards as representing Earth and the material sphere of life. Yes. Yes. And it also, I just recently discovered that the suit of pentacles is associated with the new moon. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And Earth. That makes sense. Yeah. Pretty cool. And now it's your turn. Yeah. We're going to dive into the St. Osseth Witches. Now, Pope Innocent VIII, 1484, declared that witchcraft was heterodoxy, and the crime was a capital offense as of 1563 in Britain. Approximately 200,000 witches were in some horrible manner put to death, often tortured, hung, or burned throughout Europe. Okay, I've got a cat coming through, just a second. Throughout Western Europe. Okay, come on, kitty. (laughs) <laughs> Queen Elizabeth I visited the Priory in 1579 and made it clear not enough was being done to condemn the local witches. The people who were blameworthy were usually poor elderly women who most often owned pets who were commonly cats. They were considered to be their familiars, which would help them carry out tasks of an evil nature. I mean, and weren't they usually not connected to a guy, so they were like widows and... I don't know. I, I'm i not sure. Oh. 
I, I, I think that probably most commonly we hear about the women. I don't know if it's not connected men or not, because men were accused as witches. Yes, yes. I was meaning, like, were they wives or were they, like, single or, you know? Well, like, I, I did actually, I thought I just said that. Maybe I've said oh. it in a different podcast, that uh, it's usually single elderly women. Yeah, and how dare women be um, independent. Right. Well, and that maybe they're just unfortunate circumstances have made yeah. them in you know individual single women it's mm-hmm. possible and they could be blamed for that mm. yeah right? yeah yeah any reason so in 1582 14 women who were from St. Osseth in a coastal village near Brightling, Brightling Sea in Essex were accused of and tried for witchcraft they were tried in Chelmsford Nurse wife, I'm sorry, I can't say anything today. <laughs> Nurse maid and midwife, the first person singled out as an elderly woman by the name of Ursula Kemp. An argument or disagreement occurred with Grace Thurlow, the mother of sick Davy Thurlow. This was after Ursula cured Davy, but was not taken on as a nursemaid to care for Grace's daughter, so there was some tension between them. Uh huh. She became suspect of witchcraft after the daughter later fell out of bed and broke her neck. Then, another incident of disagreement transpired. She was reported to the authorities and sent to Chelmsford to await trial. She was held at the Cage Medieval Prison in St. Osseth. Interesting side note, the cage was last used as a prison in 1908. It is now a private residence that has tales of hauntings and has been on several television programs. Hmm. That's an interesting little tidbit. Yeah. So anybody who wants to can look that up. Yeah. Now, coming back to Ursula. A judge, Brian Darcy, from St. Clair's Hall, convinced Ursula's eight-year-old boy to make testimony against her, as well as convincing her that he would show mercy if she confessed. How often have we heard that story? Mm Mm-hmm. Naturally, she did. She even went so far as to admitting she had four familiars, two cats, a toad, and a lamb. Interestingly, the lamb was claimed to have been used in the death of the Thurlow's baby. Mm. As with so many put on trial facing death, she was convinced to point the justices in the direction and naming of other witches. In her case, she named for four other women, Alice Hunt, Alice Manfield, Elizabeth Bennett, and Marjorie Salmon. As one can imagine, these women were also convinced to give up the names of other witches. In this case, it equaled the amount of nine other women. These women were Elizabeth Eustace, Anne Swallow, Cicely Sellis, I'm not sure that I'm saying that right, Joan Turner, Margaret Greville, Agnes Glasscock, Annis Hurd, Alice Manfield, and Joan Pesci. Two of all of these were for certain put to death, Ursula Kemp, who was hanged, along with Elizabeth Bennet. It's unknown as to what transpired with the others, for sure. There's no real record that can be found. Ah. Proclaimed witch finder General Matthew Hopkins was to blame for the placing of 300 to death between 1644 and 1647 in East Anglia. Catholics were often claimed to have been witches as the uprising of Puritan preachers grew. In Bury, St. Edmunds, 68 were put to death. In Chelmsford, 19 were hanged, and two of those were from Osseth. Uh, yeah. So many. So many. The Discovery of Witches, written by Matthew Hopkins, born in 1620, died 1647, in 1647 detailed, quote, his gruesome methods for determining if someone was a witch. These methods were later used around the world and even quoted at the Salem Witch Trials in America in 1692. This was cited from the St. Osseth Museum in UK. Quote, His first accusation was in the neighboring village known as Manningtree. The laws against witchcraft were abandoned in 1736. And that's that. Hmm. All right. In our history of magic, we have the Vedic period in India. This will be interesting. 
yes, I did not get as much information as I'd have liked. I was also n- not doing so hot on the research and writing that day. Yeah, it was an off day. It was an off day. And we have those. Yep. I mean, today we're both super tired. Mm-hmm. So, the Vedic era was in 1500 to 500 BCE in India. It was, like in many other tr- places, a time of magic. There were amulets, chants, and astrology. The Atharva Veda was written around this time period. It is one of the four Vedas, or holy books, of Hinduism, and a collection of spells of chants. Now, that's just the Atharva Veda that's a collection of spells and chants, not the whole, whole Vedas. Mm-hmm. As with all the Vedas, authorship is not known for sure. Amulets were much like what you see from other ancient cultures, invoking gods and or goddesses and other powers to protect by using writing and images on a necklace. The swastika was also a well-known and used symbol. We know it as the symbol of the Nazis now, but this was long before that and was used as a symbol of invoking well-being. Interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. Chants were used widely. One such use was to ward off sickness. That was a big one. Specifically, the spirits were thought to cause sickness. I think that was the same thing as in in Babylon. Hmm. Is they thought spirits caused sickness. Another use to gain a lover, and another to praise and or gain favor with the gods. It actually makes sense what you said about the sickness. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Vedic astrology is related to Western astrology, and they were much closer in practice thousands of years ago. Long, long time ago, like four or five thousand years ago. It was, I think it migrated from like Middle East over to India, and it changed from there. Mm -hmm. But there are differences, especially now. One is the fact that Vedic astrology has lunar mansions, sort of like sun signs, but having to do with specific divisions of the sky that the moon spends one day in during the month. So it switches through the different signs each day of the month. Hmm. Vedic astrology is also done around learning your karma. That's a big thing in Hinduism. Uh, Your karma, you know, what you do will affect your next life and what you get reincarnated as, so on and so forth. Astrology was used for many things, including making personal decisions, but was also used in war decisions and running the kingdoms of the time. The Atharva Veda, as I said before, is one of the four Vedas, the holy books of the Hindus. The Atharva Veda was written between 1200 and 900 BCE. It wasn't accepted as a Veda till much later, though, somewhere around the second part of 1000 BCE. So, you know, like 500 or 300 BCE. Mm -hmm. And many documents from the period of its writing only mention three Vedas, so it wasn't accepted yet, like I said. The Atharva Veda contains 730 hymns contained in 20 books. It contains hymns to deities, chants for love, chants to hurt enemies, chants for healing, and more. I mean, there was literally one, like one of the first ones is for constipation. (laughs) So, yeah. Covering all the grounds. Covering all the grounds. The Vedic period in India was full of magic and new technology for the time. I have to say, this was not the easiest research I've ever done, but hopefully this has piqued your curiosity. Yeah. That's, um, thank you for doing it. I know that wasn't easy. Yeah, it was, um, it was a challenge, but then we all have our challenging days. Yes. And sometimes with our research, it can be very difficult. Mm Mm-hmm. Not to say it isn't fun, because I enjoy the heck out of it. Right. Yeah, we enjoy it. Otherwise, we would not be doing this. Indeed. (laughs) All right. Tarot. Okay. We got the Ace of Pentacles. Hmm. Something of fundamental importance is headed this way. A gift to continue on our journey, but to see it with fresh eyes. What is blossoming in our world right now? This is a fertile time for new opportunities concerning the monetary in our lives, friendship, networking, work, or home. There is a structure or routine that should be considered when dealing with any of these items. If this isn't already in place, it's time to think about doing so. 
We are in the first signs of spring and is now when we clean out and make room for something new on a material level. Is there something cluttering our lives? We should consider how to go about letting go of that which is in the way of our newfound growth. Let's manifest what we desire by taking our intentions we set in the winter months and place them into action in order to meet our goals for the year. How can we manifest abundance around what we are moving towards? Something we can do is to be prepared to recognize it for what it is, be grateful, and accept it. We should also keep in mind to share in our wealth. Mm. All right. Please it's rate us. short and simple today. Yeah. <laughs> Went fast, everybody. Yeah, it did. Please rate us on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever else you found us. I'm Tatiana saying goodbye for now. And I'm Sylvia saying so long, and thank you for writing with us. This has been Powered, Powered by, by Magic. Magic. Thank goodbye, you. everybody. Thank you so much. We hope to hear from you. Yeah. Have a good one. Bye.